Korea and the world are in deep despair and sorrow in the aftermath of the Seoul ferry disaster. Any deaths are heartbreaking, but this time we are even sadder and angrier because most of the victims are young high school students. We have also come to learn that the disaster has been contained or even prevented altogether. We are here to talk about the ways to overcome this tremendous feeling of despair that is affecting the families of the victims and the general public. We are trying to learn lessons from this disaster and we're trying to find where do we go from here, signs of hope for future generation. To have a discussion, we have Dr. Lo kyung Sun a prominent child and adolescent psychiatrist with years of experience in teaching and practice. Welcome to the program, Dr. No. Thank you. And we have Professor Lee Jung-hoon from Yonsei University, also Korea's ambassador for human rights. Welcome to the program. And to tell us about the work of volunteers, we have Ms. Kim Juja, the head of International Relations Department from Korea Red Cross. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Before we start our discussion, we'll first see the turn of events that has shocked the world mm. and how people here in Korea and in every corner of the globe come together to share their love and support. April 16th, 2014. What we had thought would be just another ordinary day became a day that we will never be able to forget, a day of great tragedy. The world was shocked to learn more than 300 people were killed or missing when a ferry traveling from Incheon to the island of Jeju sank. Many lives were lost with the ship, and most of the victims were high school students on a school trip, making this tragedy all the more devastating. Their full life ahead of them, stolen. Upon hearing the news, parents rushed to the nearby scene in hopes of hearing any good news, possibly of more survivors. But the entire nation soon fell into despair as hopes of seeing them again faded. Amid the grief, people came together to pray for a miracle and looked for any means to comfort each other as much as possible. Volunteers rushed to the site to help in any way they could. People sent care packages. The international community was sympathetic to the pain felt in Korea and came together to express its support and love with heartwarming messages. It was much appreciated and helped many, providing strength to carry on. Although we are all stricken with the deepest of sorrow that cannot be described with words, a show of compassion of any kind gives us all hope for the future. There were heroes who sacrificed their lives to help others escape death. A service crew member, Park ji gave up her own life to save as many as possible. Her heroic act showed that we should not lose faith in each other. Our deepest sympathy and sincerest condolences to the bereaved families. There are several stories of the act of heroism that are reported on the news consoling our mind. And there are many stories of people expressing care and support. They indeed give people the strength to carry on. Despite disturbing news that we hear of irresponsibility and people taking advantage of the situation, we know that there are greater number of people who really care. And there are so many volunteers at the site helping any way they can. Ms. Kim, uh, what are the role of volunteers on the site? Uh, the role of the volunteers is uh, very important and this time in this very accident their uh, tireless uh, commitments and also dedication to help the, the victims and also bereaved families are tremendous. Uh, on, the, on the first day they, they just um, desperated that they, they could eat uh, properly and they couldn't sleep properly so we provide um, uh, you know, from the very basics in the water and meal, but also we provide uh, uh, the emergency health kits, uh, including blankets and some other stuff. So it was like a 24 hours um, uh, service. And uh, 
the, the volunteers, they are uh, from the community affected. So they know the people and they're very sensitive uh, culturally and socially and they know how to help those uh, no, the people. So I think uh, the role of volunteers is very, very tremendous. But I'm, I just um, explained it, how they did it in Jindo, but also there's um, another disaster site, which we know that the Ansan, where the most of passing, uh, the students came from. So uh, when uh, the still there's a uh, certain rescue operation undergoing until today, so um, I think it's the uh, the volunteer work is needed uh, uh, continuously. So uh, we will do uh, our best uh, not only in the area but also in the Ansan, where the many people also uh, uh, to share uh, their uh, um, uh, the, the sympathy and condolences together. And uh, I went to the Ansan city last Saturday. Uh, I worked with uh, our uh, volunteers uh, and I saw that uh, they are working, uh, they're helping these people all around the club uh, is, uh, during the day and night. So without um, these volunteers, I think it was uh, very difficult to really um, they help uh, the community, uh, the people who are affected by the terrible accident. So I think uh, once again, this, uh, the, the volunteer is a backbone of helping these affected peoples. Yeah, indeed, uh, it is very important to have so many volunteers mm -hmm. on the site. Mm -hmm. And in addition to mm -hmm. what they do mm -hmm. in practical senses, mm -hmm. just uh, for them being there mm -hmm. is very important and is, is very comforting mm -hmm. uh, to the families of the victims. Uh, so the existence of the volunteers on the site uh, really helps uh, the psychological feelings of mm -hmm. the families of the victims. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Dr. No? Yeah, they shouldn't be left alone. Uh, it's terribly important for them to be with their loved ones, friends, families. Uh, let me make a comment about a volunteer. Uh, on April, I think, 8, 18th, the Thursday, uh, Dr. Jung Eun Sun from Gyeongbuk University, a child psychiatrist, was appointed as head of a uh, psychological uh, support team. And on Saturday and Sunday, uh, the Korean Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry organized a training program uh, for child and adolescent psychiatrists who, who would be willing to volunteer their time and effort. About 110 child and adolescent psychiatrists uh, attended the meeting. And since then, about 22, to 30 child and adolescent psychiatrists uh, came to Danwon Kodungakyo and Goryeo uh, Daehak Byeongwon in Nansan uh, to, provi to provide support and psycho psychological treatment for first year student and third year student and the survivors uh, who are hospitalized in Korea University Hospital. So. Um it's not only for Koreans, but we also witness so much help from the international community. So how is the international society uh, reacting to this? And, and what are the, the assistance we com that come from mm. this international community? Mm. As we know that this, since, because of this accident so tremendous and so shock, not to the, the Korean people and also to, uh, to the, uh, the globally, I mean, uh, so uh, we and the Korean Red Cross, so we received uh, uh, a lot of uh, um, the question and, uh, from abroad uh, through email and also through uh, some other means of uh, communication. And in particular, they even called us and they want to help, but just let us know how we can help you. So uh, we received this kind of... Um, very warm, uh, uh, the sharing uh, of uh, the emotions, uh, supporting the the people, uh, the affected people, and also the Korean uh, people, and so uh, it was very amazing how the international community and people abroad and the foreigner they um, express their solidarity to support 
awesome. So I think this is really, really um, the graceful and uh, very uh, touching. Yes, the news of this uh, Seoul ferry disaster hit the world as a really big news of disaster and news of sadness. Um, I'm wondering how the international com community reacted to this news. What were their responses? Professor Lee? Well, first of all, I would say that um, on issues like this, um, where there's such huge civilian casualties and, and tragic stories involved, there's no national boundaries um, in a sense that you can't really categorize things into, you know, this is local, this is international. Um, we've been involved very much in, in other countries, um, disaster cases where we send volunteers uh, and aid. And that's exactly what's happening in the international community uh, as well. Um, there's a huge number of foreign correspondents who are at the site to cover the rescue mission and also the you know, personal stories, uh, grief, as well as heroism. Um, so obviously, when something of this magnitude, and especially, I mean, this is very, very rare that the, 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 amongst the victims, bulk sum are of the same high school. Um, I mean, in, in hundreds, uh, we're talking about 300 uh, kids, almost 300 kids being just dying. Um, and, and the story is that the, the sad thing is that it's, it's something that could have been prevented. So it's almost unnecessarily um, this tragedy uh, happening. So um, you know, the story is still unfolding. Um, obviously, there's huge interest and concern from the international community, particularly the mass media. Um, and of course, everyone is wishing well, but unfortunately, as days went by, it seemed that the likelihood of finding anyone surviving, of course, in the very beginning, first few days anyways, there were other cases of, uh, of people surviving, even underwater through the air pockets. Uh, in the ships. So there were, of course, hopes, uh, not only within Korea, but in the international community as a whole. But I think those hopes were dashed um, as the rescue mission, mission just kept going on for days and, and the ship completely capsized and, and submerged. So um, I would say that, you know, you can't really distinguish what we're feeling and what the international community might be feeling. I think it's the same. Um, everyone's um, putting together prayers uh, for the lost ones uh, and the family members. So um, we're, all, we're all in this together. Uh, there's a national grief uh, as well as international grief. And all we have to do is to try to you know, find the silver lining and, and, and make, the, you know, make the most of the situation so that something like this would not happen ever. Uh, again, so that their death is not in vain. Of course, we are still in a state of shock and despair. But at the same time, it's quite comforting to know that so many people, both from Korea and from the global community, try to help, rendering their time and effort. But at the same time, we are also concerned about what went wrong in a way to prevent this kind of disaster happening again. So next we'll discuss the safety issues and uh, we'll try to see uh, how to prevent the same thing happening again. The issue of work ethic has arisen in lieu of the fact that the captain and many of the crew on the Sewol ferry abandoned the ship, reportedly sparing little or no effort to help rescue passengers. The public was outraged upon hearing the news. The New York Times even said that the act violated the proud tradition practiced on the seas, and a captain in the U.S. was quoted as saying that his act was a disgrace. Lack of provisions on safety also came under the spotlight. Did Korea sacrifice safety precautions in its quest for economic advancement? What should we consider to prevent such tragedy from ever happening again?
as we learn more and more about what really happened uh, and what led to that kind of big disaster, we, uh, there is a very, it's very unfortunate to find that uh, some people really acted irresponsibly, and especially the captain and the crew, who should have thought the safe safety of the passengers first, uh, according to the maritime law, didn't do their job properly. So, uh, but we should not be too quick to judge that everyone was irresponsible or um, they were really poor in work ethics. What do you think, Professor Lee? Well, um, first of all, this is a very, um, in terms of the behavior of the captain and the crew, uh, I would say that it's a very isolated uh, case. I mean, I don't think um, just because this happened that all other captains and crew members of other ferries and ships uh, will be will be similar uh, to to act. This is uh, this is this is as there's a saying that you know Murf of Murphy's law, everything that could go wrong went wrong. I think uh, that's the case here. Now, if we were to place, having said that, if we are to place um, responsibilities, clearly um, it has to be the captain uh, and the crew. They have the first and the primary responsibility to, to save the um, passengers uh, of the ship, especially when most of the passengers are so young, uh, in their teens. Uh, not only did they not save them, um, they've made wrong, they gave wrong instructions to stay inside when one instruction to lead them out, out of the boat on the deck uh, would probably have led to the saving of most, if not all, uh, of, of the lives. Then, of course, beyond that primary responsibility of the captain and the crew, we have to look at the system has the system worked? I mean, you're talking about the question of safety. Has all the mechanisms of safety check and inspections been in order? Um, would it have, you know, would, would the, the disaster have been prevented or maybe lessened? Um, and then, of course, you know, there's been a lot of um, focus on this company, the, uh, the Cheonghaejin Marine Company, which obviously put more cargoes than they were supposed to. Now, they're not supposed to do that. There are supposed to be inspections done on cargoes and the ferries before the departure, but obviously they didn't do that. Uh, they didn't do a good job uh, on checking and inspecting the, the load of the cargoes in cars and big container ships and, and so on, as, container boxes and so on and so forth. Now, why is that the case? Uh, therein lies the question of collusion uh, collusion between the, the, the shipping companies mm -hmm. and, on the other hand, the safety inspection agencies. Uh, now, the safety inspection agencies, I mean, particularly if you're looking at the Korea Shipping Association, the KSA, um, they're the ones who are supposed to be looking to see if the ferries are complying with all the you know, navigation manuals. They're the ones who are supposed to be testing the, the fire and escape equipments. They're the ones who are supposed to be making sure that the cargoes are securely fastened. None of these obviously uh, happen. So why is that the case? And the, of course, the investigation is still going on. So you know, I don't think we should jump to the conclusion as yet. Um, but the, the suggestion uh, or the implication is that a um, that lot of the people in these um, safety inspection agencies are the, are the people who are retired uh, from, the, you know, from the government uh, positions. And in fact, the Korea Sh Shipping Association workers, the ones who are supposed to be inspecting and monitoring and controlling, are actually being paid by the, the ship owners, the, the shipping companies. So, I mean, we have a very, very unusual um, system where you might say that it's inevitable uh, that there's collusion and rent seeking, if you will. So, I mean, these are issues that will certainly have to be uh, looked into and corrected if we are to you know, head into a system where, where things could be avoided. 
we didn't have the tragedy because we didn't have the manuals or the you know, inspection codes. We had all of those. Uh, it's just the implementation and the execution part by the people who are supposed to be doing that. That was the lacking part. And that's an area that really seriously, seriously has to be uh, looked into. Well, it seems like uh, the disaster was the, an outcome of a very unfortunate outcome of combination of so many bad practices uh, occurring at the same time. But it, don't you think that this is the very time for us to overhaul the country's uh, system for uh, enhancing the safety? Uh, so it, shouldn't we use this as an opportunity to upgrade the, the safety level for the country? Oh, absolutely. Um, and I think that's where the, once the rescue mission or the, the disaster mission um, sort of concludes, I'm sure the national energy and certainly the government energy will be focused on, um, on creating a system where certainly in the area of safety um, that uh, things will run uh, according to the manuals so that this sort of thing uh, will be pre uh, prevented again. I would say that um, you know, it's a question of professionalism. It's a question of responsibility, accountability, integrity. It's a question of ethics, morality. So the combination of all that. So how do we place those in, you know, how do we put those in place so that, uh, so that the manuals and the inspections and monitoring could be executed uh, according uh, to, to, to the manuals. Well, I would say that you know, it starts with education uh, and training. Education is very, very important. So you know, it's not just when, we, when we're talking about overhauling, as you suggest, of, of certain system. It's, it, you know, it's not a, you know, it's not a question, question of changing certain Article X and Article V here and there and hope that things will get better. No, it's about the, you know, the, about the people's psyche. It's about the, uh, the repetition of training drills. I don't, I don't know if you remember, but um, during the 9-11 um, disaster uh, in the United States, there was a company called the Morgan Stanley. It's a bank, investment bank. Um, they were placed in the second tower on the 22nd floor uh, when... And there was a um, gentleman by the name of, um, I forgot his name, his, oh, Rick Rescorla. Um, and he was in charge of the security and safety uh, of that company. And when the first plane hit the first tower, um, he was ready because through all the years, uh, he's gone through all sorts of random uh, drills to evacuate 3,000 workers of the Morgan Stanley. I mean, we have, we have to remember, they're on the 22nd floor. When the first plane hit, he, he called for the rescue, rescue mission, and within only 14, 14 minutes, all the members, almost all the members of Morgan Stanley were safely uh, on the ground. He went back to double check, and he never returned. But what I'm saying is that it's these training and drills and practices according to the manual that enables successful rescue in times of real uh, emergency. And that's what's lacking in, 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 in certainly this case, and hopefully uh, it won't be lacking in other cases, should there be other cases. I think um, in, it, with the enormity of the disaster, uh, many Koreans are reflecting upon what went wrong as a society. And some people even argue that, uh, you know, there is some kind of irresponsible or negligent uh, grain in Korean society and culture. But that might be an overstatement. Uh, what do you think, Dr. Lee? Well, surely, I mean, that, that I would say that I would agree that that's an, that's an overstatement. Um, but having said that, again, you know, we do have to have a system um, where there's clear accountability. I mean, it ha things have to be very clear. There seems to have been a lot of collusion between the shipper and the inspection uh, authorities. Uh, so these are things that need to be cleaned up. Um, and it will take a mammoth effort um, by the government. 
uh, and I hope it doesn't stay just within the, the maritime uh, aspects. I mean, if you look at the uh, tourist buses, I mean, people turn on the music very loud, people are dancing on the corridors. That's very dangerous, I would say. Um, so, and in the subways, you know, are we safe? I mean, there's so many different areas that, that we have to look into and make sure that um, even if there's 0.001% chance that something wrong could go, then, then, then this is an area that we really have to look into very carefully. And I think um, I'm confident that our government will launch on that path. It's going to be very, very difficult. There's going to be resistance. Um, but having said that, I think this is something that needs to be done so that our country will, um, will be able to overcome this tragedy and become a better society as a result. Aside from those tangible aspects, such as safety system, we are also concerned about the psychological state of mind uh, of the victims' uh, families and the general public who have been affected by the news and they, were, uh, have been, they have been exposed to the news all the time. So next issue is a uh, psychological aspect of this disaster. With the sadness, Families are having to learn to cope with the anguish of departing with loved ones. And there are survivors of this Hewol ferry who lived through the nightmare. Many of them are young students with their entire lives ahead of them. It is uncertain how long it will take for them to recover and return to some form of normalcy. The high school that suffered the most casualties is also trying to resume everyday life. Much assistance will be needed. Even the entire nation, and anyone who had been exposed to the news, is also trying very hard to cope with the tragedy. As the entire nation is mourning over the loss, people are seeking means to deal with the grief, ways to heal the psychological pain we will be suffering for some time to come. We are all psychologically devastated by the tragedy and we've been watching the news uh, all the time. And, uh, but that cannot even be compared to the distress and despair uh, that are experienced by the victim's family members, especially the parents of uh, those young high school students. Dr. No, uh, what are the psychological state of those uh, people who are affected by this disaster? could be categorized into several different categories. One, the first uh, would be acute stress, I would say process or response, not di disorder. Uh, of course, some of the victims who may suffer from acute stress disorder, which may last for about a month. And if it's not abated or relieved after a month, then we, we would call they are suffering from, from post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, in the stage of acute stress disorder process, what they may be experiencing is uh, disbelief, uh, being in a daze, feeling numb, uh, helplessness, uh, some guilt or shame, which may last for about a month. And if that becomes a post-traumatic disorder, the symptoms are the fir first re-experiencing what happened again and again. Uh, second, make every effort to avoid uh, and forget about this problem. And third, all kinds of physiological or biological problems such as sleep problem, eating problem, uh, being easily startled, irritable, uh, angry, can't control the emotion, etc., etc. So that's post, what we call post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, I think most of the uh, students or victims have enough strength to survive uh, in the acute stage of stress response. But according to the statistics, about 5 to 10 percent of those who suffer from acute stress disorder will continue to have the problem, uh, which may last for years. Well, mostly especially we are concerned uh, about uh, the psychological state of the survivors 
who mm -hmm. lost their friends. Uh, and many of them are teenagers mm -hmm. who are still in the stage of uh, forming their personalities. So are there any particular treatment that they need to receive? The principle of helping them would be the one to provide a safe place with a person whom they can trust and develop a healing relationship. Within that relationship and in a safe uh, place, they can start to regroup their strength and uh, process what had happened and reintegrate their experience and go back to normal life. Yes, indeed, uh, those survivors and the family members of the victims are the ones who, need, who primarily need the psychological care. But what about the general public? Uh, some people I know who've been watching the news on, on TV all the time say that they have lost appetite, they can't sleep at night. And some people say that they cannot gather the energy to carry on their everyday life. Is it possible that the general public can have uh, some form of depression just for watching uh, what's going on? Uh, that's what I uh, just mentioned, that uh, acute stress response that they are going through, uh, which in most of the situation will be abated within a month. Uh, of course, uh, about 5 to 10 percent of the general public will develop into a more serious problem who may be high risk group and they, uh, they really should need more help, uh, should get more help from the professionals. Well, regarding the how to give psychological treatment or helping hand uh, in dealing with their distress, I'm also concerned about the volunteers who are directly exposed to the scene, to the disaster, mm -hmm. and they have to contact uh, the victims' families on a daily basis. Do you have any special treatment uh, after they finish their uh, work, or do they, are they prepared to deal with such uh, you know, particular uh, situation? That's the, something I think we really Mm, should uh, consider uh, very um, important as a very important matter. Uh, you know, for the time being, what I have to, what I heard, uh, and also when I talked to my colleagues and uh, st the volunteers on the spot, uh, we haven't done much enough uh, to provide this kind of, uh, uh, you know, psychosocial uh, support, but. Uh, you know, now uh, when I, uh, the total number of volunteers that we have been uh, uh, the working in, in that uh, site is uh, now more than 3,000. It's an accumulated number. Uh, uh, and the, the activity they are involved in very various. Uh, some are more exposed to more less stressful activities. Some are the more like uh, very directly engage in some very sad um, uh, situation. Uh, we have very professional volunteers, uh, we call it psychosocial support, uh, uh, the, the volunteers, they are trained and they know how to deal with those uh, situations. We need to uh, really um, come up with uh, some very uh, comprehensive uh, the package of the uh, psychological support to the volunteers. So the level of what we are doing is not enough. So I think uh, we need to do uh, more and we have to really, uh, all the lessons learned from this disaster, then we, I think this is, uh, it will be a good opportunity for us to review what we have now, what is uh, still need to be improved further. So I think if the Korean Red Cross is uh, or uh, we'll uh, uh, review the whole process of what we have to uh, uh, we have to doing so far, and then we will uh, develop the new or updated our uh, uh, you know manual and some other things. But uh, uh, when I s uh, spoke with uh, some volunteers, they said uh, you know uh, they are, they are managing well uh, so far, uh, but we really need to 
assess or evaluate the, all the, the activity and then the, we will come up with more uh, uh, you know, proper uh, the, the ways to support these people afterward. Yes, it will be very critical to deal with this mental health issue after such a disaster and this should continue for a while. Our next topic will be what can we do for the future? The world has come together to pray for the victims of the ferry disaster and their families, and for Korea, so that it may overcome this great tragedy. Messages of encouragement were shared by so many. Bulletin boards were filled with loving messages for the ones who are suffering. Unspeakable disasters have happened in the past, and we have survived, becoming stronger and wiser. It was all possible because we came together to support each other. We are once again uniting to overcome this prevailing feeling of helplessness. We are setting a vision for the future, vowing to our children that such a tragedy will never be repeated. Already there is some light of hope. People are trying to get involved, raising voices to correct oversights. With the compassion expressed by many, we will be able to return to our lives. However, there will be a big scar to bear. When we see this kind of tragedy happening, uh, we think about how can we prevent this ever happening again in the future? So what can we do, Professor Lee? Well, I think we have to keep in mind that we are a law-abiding society and therefore we cannot make quick decisions based on emotionalism. Um, in the initial stages, I think this is, going to, this is going to be a long process. It's not something that's going to fix the issue you know, overnight. So it's going to be a very long, drawn-up process that doesn't just change few parts of the um, you know, government articles, but you know, there has to be a transitioning uh, of the society as a whole. We've gone through the you know, from the ashes of Korean War to industrialization, to, to, to modernization, democratization, and we've dabbled with the globalization. And I think really we've come at a stage where we really have to become mature global citizens. So to begin with, in the initial stages, I think there's no question that those who are responsible have to be penalized. You know, a, a society functions and works. I mean, if there's inspections, all sorts of rules and regulations, the way that it works is not only the execution, but those who don't follow those rules and don't follow the manuals should be penalized. We have a very generous system where those people who don't go the right way are somehow, you know, brought back and they're never really casted out. So we have to have a very strict policy of making sure that those people who are responsible are drawn out, surfaced, that we know exactly who they are, not just the captain and the crew, for certain. But, you know, I think it cuts across the all, in not only the Coast Guard, maybe the Department of the um, Ocean and, and Fisheries, maybe the Department of Security and um, um, Public Administration, maybe even the Department of um, Education, Ministry of Education, um, you really have to draw, draw out everyone, uh, especially those people who are involved in inspections, those people who might have been responsible for allowing for the, you know, the, the building, the, the, they've actually raised few more space so that more people could, be, um, to, could, could get, on, get on board. Could that have made the difference in tipping over the ship? Maybe, I don't know, the inspections are going on. But I'm just saying that there has to be a wholesale rounding up of those people responsible from top to bottom and penalize them uh, so that it gives a very clear signal and message to the public, to the society as a whole, that this sort of thing will not be tolerated. Uh, and then of course, you go into every single aspect of the society, particularly that relates to the safety and the security of the people 
uh, as I mentioned earlier, not just on ferries, but you know, are we safe in the airlines? Are we safe in the KTX, uh, underground transportation, taxis, buses? Uh, it could be in factories. So er I think there has to be a huge task force uh, that will overlook these issues and make sure that uh, we have a, a, um, a clear-cut control tower so that in cases of emergencies as we've had uh, uh, recently, that we are able to respond to it ASAP, uh, right away, and efficiently. Um, and that, I think, will take a long time, but I think that, that that's the direction that general public is you know, thinking, that you know, this is the vision, this is the way to go. We all think that, so now it's on the government to actually you know, come up with a blueprint and show the public, convince the public that the government is now on the right track to make sure that our society uh, has become a better society as a result of this tragedy. So rushing things may not have been the primary reason or the, a reason uh, for this disaster. There was a very unfortunate uh, combination of so many things that went wrong. So, and uh, of course the captain and those crew members who fled from the ship um, were individuals and uh, maybe they don't represent uh, people working the uh, you know, hardworking people in Korean society. So, um, you know, overly generalizing what's called, you know, the personality or Korean way of uh, behavior might be such an overstatement. But uh, it is true that uh, after witnessing the disaster and the aftermath of the disaster, some people say that they have lost their trust in the system of the society. So how can we restore our, the trust in our society and how do we rebuild the kind of spirit of unity or uh, spirit of believing each other as uh, you know, compatible partners in the same society. Dr. No, do we have any kind of sort of a uh, process that we can go through to establish this? It's, a, it's an extremely difficult issue, but let me say, put it this way. It's, it, it's very easy to blame others. And it's not so easy to blame self. But I think we should really look into ourselves, see what's going on within us. Uh, am I a responsible person, for instance? Well, that sort of issue. And we, uh, every one of us, us has problems. And after really reflecting ourselves, then sh should we be able to really tell the grown up, uh, growing children uh, about our belief system uh, so that they, they can believe in themselves to build a system country where they can f feel safe and feel that they have the control of the system. So uh, to reiterate, easy to blame others but we really should look into ourselves also at the same time. Yes, so, we have, uh, so far we have discussed the many different aspects of the aftermath of uh, Seoul Ferry disaster. Uh, before we conclude, would you like to make any additional comments, maybe starting with Dr. No, please? Uh, I just heard the news yesterday that the government is, I think, seriously thinking and planning to start a trauma treatment center in Ansan, which I think is a very good news. Thank you. Professor Lee? Yes, um, at the end of the day, it's the people. Um, so at various positions of, of significant importance, especially dealing with people's lives in such emergency cases, making sure that um, you have the right people not because they're, of, they're from certain school or they're from certain region or they have a network or connections with the, you know, certain companies or what, what have you, but because they have professionalism, the best knowledge in that area. Uh, do we have that right person, uh, whether that's the captain or the Coast Guard or what have you? And on the broader spectrum of things, 
I really think that, you know, I hope this uh, provides an opportunity to overhaul our public educational system. When children grow up from elementary school to junior high school and, and, and high schools, are we producing the kind of um, children who are who have, who have this sense of strong responsibility, accountability, because it carries over into their careers. Um, had the captain had proper education in ethics and morality, maybe he would have behaved differently. Um, who knows? But I think the education is such an important part. And there, again, do we, ha we really have to look at, do we have the right people, right teachers, teaching the children um, to grow up, to be responsible citizens um, who will act right. Uh, I hope someday that in Korea, you know, the captains, remember in 1912, the Titanic captain, Captain Smith, told his crew, be British. Uh, I hope that, uh, you know, Korean uh, captains could, could say that at some point. You know, like to say be Korean could have a positive ring. And I think we can get there, but I think there's lots of work to do. I see. And Ms. Kim? Um, disaster response doesn't come along. I think it has to be combined with the disaster preparedness. That's a very important. So safety education uh, from our early uh, childhood is very important, like uh, Professor Lee just mentioned. Uh, but I think it's just how we can prepare well ourselves. And then uh, actual disaster happen, then we have to, we can properly uh, and effectively and swiftly we can respond to all different uh, uh, the digester. Digester doesn't give uh, any signal. Mm. Uh, it can happen everywhere, in the sea and the land and night and day, in the air and uh, everywhere. So I think this is, we have to really serious now uh, 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 on this is, is, you know, we often say it's a solma, mm -hmm. the probability, right? This is Solma, it's always somewhere in, in, in our psychological or mental uh, thinking process. But I think it's a, there's no Solma. Mm -hmm. We have to really be um, uh, serious in, in any issue related to safety. And mm -hmm. so I think it's this whole issue has to be uh, incorporated in the, the plans or the maker of our plan of the disaster preparedness. Thank you. The unthinkable has happened. However, there are lessons to be learned and that will make us wiser. And at the same time, we should never forget about the losses of lives and we should never let the tragedy happening again. Thank you for being with us today. And thank you for watching. That concludes our program on the aftermath of the Sewol Ferry disaster.